guy in the block, he go to a car show. Be like, what the hell is that thing? You know? Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and yeah people will automatically bad. assume, well, whose engine is it? Well, it's their own engine. Yeah. They developed it themselves. Not just one, but what, three different motors? That's pretty impressive. Yeah, The car we're featuring today, a car I've been trying to track down for a long time. There's not a lot of these in the States, but that could change very soon. This is a 1997 TVR Cerbera. Now, if you're not familiar with that name, that's understandable because to me, this is what the English do best. You know, they take something and they build it in a shed and they get the whole thing going and then they make a couple of dozen more, a few dozen more. And it's a low production automobile. But the thing that I love about it, they didn't build a car and then put a Ford motor or, you know, a lot of times they usually use the Land Rover motor. They built their own engine. And to me, that's the sign of, uh, of real engineers and, and real enthusiasts. Let's meet Gavin Bristow. Gavin, come on in. Hey. Now, what is your connection with this car? Oh, so this is uh, one of the vehicles that uh, TVR Garage has here in the United States. Um, we've got a lot of connections back to, uh, back to the UK, of course. So. Do you find a lot of Americans are familiar with this car? Uh, we find, find it's a couple of different pockets, actually, Jay. Yeah. So some people have recognized the vehicles from some of the PlayStation-type games from, right. uh, from the 90s. Um, and some people are aware of them from some of their heritage going back to the uh, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s as a TVR brand. Um, and, uh, yeah, but a lot of people haven't seen them before, so they see this beautiful-looking vehicle, and all of a sudden they're like, wow, what is, what is this? So. The, the company in the latest version started about, what, 92, 93? and went to about, what, 2008, 9, 10, around there? Yeah, so this is a Peter Wheeler era vehicle. Um, so he actually picked the company up in the early 80s. Um, but this, uh, these derivatives, these versions that had their, their own engines, um, these came on song in uh, 96 and then all the way through to 2008. Yeah. Well, that's what I, you know, sometimes car companies don't make it because the car is too good. Mm. Or they got too much passion in it. You know, if you really want to make money, you get somebody else's engine, you stick it in there, you make it look good. You know, whereas this is done the, the proper way. I mean, it's a really engineered car, and this is such a sophisticated motor. This one is the V8, correct? Correct, yeah, this has got the 4.2 uh, right. AJP V8. And we're looking about, what, 420 horsepower? Uh, it depends on the configuration. Right. So this, the 4.2 is 360 horsepower. 360, okay. Um, but they did do a 4.5 as well, um, which is 420, and there's a, a special red rose tune, as they call it, that comes up to well, uh, 440. I remember reading about these back in the day, and the engine well, it's not an F1 engine, but it has a lot of F1 technology, high pressure oil. I mean, things that are not necessarily used on a production car, but if you're an enthusiast, you like to have it because you're going to push it, you know. And, and, and that's sort of the deal with this, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's a 75 degree uh, V8 flat plane crank engine, right. so it revs very freely. Um, it's all aluminium, so very lightweight. Uh, the engine only weighs about 260 pounds. Wow. Um, and so the, the engine's light, the, the body's light, everything about this car, car is about lightweighting. I know this is one of the first cars I heard about flat plane cranks. Mm -hmm. You know, now you see it with Ferrari, even the Ford uh, GT uh, Mustang has flat plane crank. But we're talking 25 years ago. Right. And it, it gives that unique sound. Absolutely. And then they built, which was my favorite engine at the time, although I never drove one, was the Speed 6. I, first, I love the name Speed 6. <laughs> I love the fact that somebody's making a modern six-cylinder engine, and it's leaned over to the side, kind of like the old Mercedes. Uh, did with the going, you know, and uh, I thought that was a fascinating car too. But just the idea, how much more expensive to develop and certify when you make your own engine, that shows you how much passion is involved in the car. How many cars did they produce during the 90s? Any idea? So the 90s era with all the different models that are right. available is around 15,000. Oh, um, it is of, that many? Yeah, but of this particular model, it was only about, I think it was about 1,460 around that, around that number. Oh, that's so. way more than I would have thought because you just don't, well, this is one of those cars, they, like the Morgan, it's sold big in England because it's built locally and the factory's right there and you go talk to the guy and, right. you know, you get, you get in Arizona, hey, hello, long distance. Well, I didn't mean to wake you, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it still looks contemporary to me. It doesn't look like a 25-year-old car. 
What do we have here? Fiberglass? Yeah, so it's a, a glass reinforced fiber body. Right. Um, so at the at the time, uh, was you know, some of the very lightweight materials that could be deployed uh, with a tubular space frame chassis underneath for, for lots of stiffness and, and to, uh, to help uh, with great handling for the vehicles. So. What does this weigh? Any idea? Yeah, this is about 2,400 pounds. Really? Give, give or take, uh, depending on the exact specification. Um, some of them are a little lighter, um, but yeah, so very good power to weight ratio. Yeah, with 360 horsepower, that, that is a very good power to weight ratio. Can we open the hood? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Do I open it on this side or on your side? Ah. Are they all right-hand drive? Uh, yes. I think there was a few very random left-hand right. drives made from the factory, but uh, nearly all of them are right-hand drive. Well, something else you see more and more now is this sort of front mid-engine sort of look. Uh, much like the SLR Mercedes, uh, the engine is set back. I mean, look how far back it is. Good heavens, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Really rearward of the front, uh, front center line of the wheels. Two-valve? Yes, yeah, two valve per cylinder. Right, right. Uh, the packaging's pretty tight in here, and uh, I think that's one, one of the design decisions that they took to, uh, to help with packaging. Yeah, very nice. And I guess these are popular in England and Europe as well, like, much like Citroën and Citroën and other. You just didn't even bother the American market because it's so complicated. Yeah, especially this era um, when we got to that sort of mid '90s. There was a lot more uh, uh, regulations and right. legislation, yeah, yeah. Um, and the the company just took the view at that time that um, they didn't want to have to engineer all of those systems and things into the vehicle. They right. wanted to keep it very pure. Um, and as such, uh, yes, they didn't sell in the United States, unfortunately. But now that they are 25, over 25 years old, right. um, now they're available for the, for the US market or for us to be able to bring them in. So. I'm looking at this fan set up here. That looks like almost since you're in Arizona and it's hot. Is this something you guys did or does it come from the factory, that sort of fan set? No, actually, that's actually a factory factory. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah it's it a factory set up. Like what they used to call the tropical package when you get right. an American car in Florida. Yeah. Or uh, Arizona, where it's 100 something degrees, you would get the bigger radiator, stronger fans, all the kind of yeah. stuff. So it looks like it, it doesn't, won't overheat. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, this, um, you know, this, this car is based in Arizona, and um, yeah, we've we've been running in 115 degree right. heat uh, here in the states, and it uh, it performs fine. What am I looking at right there? With that, is that washer fluid? Or that's the it? washer fluid bottle. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. I was thinking something really exotic. It's the washer fluid bottle. <laughs> yeah. What could that be? There's no secrets in that. No, 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 no. But it just looks like a nicely made car. Mm -hmm. You know, and your battery is under here. I see, oh, and this, this comes up here to reach everything. Yeah, you can remove this whole section so you can yeah. access everything for servicing. And, and Tell me about the brakes. Uh, so this has got AP racing brakes right. uh, on the vehicle, so that was factory fit. Um, so the, discs all the way around. Yep, you have disc brakes all the way around. Um, and that was very much the philosophy, especially in the, in the 90s, there was a big motor racing scene with TVR, with the TVR Challenge in the, right. in the UK, and the, the TVR Challenge vehicles ran this particular engine, the AJP V8. And you know, so the 90s a were a long time ago. Right. It's hard to believe, it seemed like just yesterday, but you still had manufacturers, discs in front, drums in back in the 90s. Right. So the car is really quite ahead of its time, I, I think. Yeah. Because I, I would read about it in Road and Track and all the European magazines. I said, oh, I wanna, I, why can't we get that here in the States? And of course, in the 90s, you, you just couldn't bring anything in. It was just, you know. Right. But very nice, yeah. Cool. Five speed? Yes, yeah, it's a five speed Borg Warner oh, okay. um, gearbox. So, yeah, very strong, very reliable. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if people ever mistake this for some Viper, because it? it looks sort of Viperish here with this, the way this piece does. And, and Absolutely, yeah, yeah it's it. quite, quite a common uh, feature of the vehicle that people yeah. go, has that been you know, influenced from the Viper? But, uh, but yeah, it's the deep. But it's a nice version. size. I didn't realize they made that many cars, so they were. So, what made them uh, fold up in 2008? What was the reason? Just. Um, I think it's just um, market dish and conditions at the time. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of challenges going on at that, that, that period. Um, and it was, you know, a very small company, so very sensitive to um, everything that was going on. I know, on you know, so. every, even like the McLaren F1, you know, they were originally supposed to build 300 of those. Mm. And now people call it the greatest car in the world. But at the time, people, oh, that's a lot of money. What? What's the name of it? I never heard of that. Right. So it, it, it's a hard sell. Plus, you're competing with all the big manufacturers that turn out something that's a little shinier and a little, you know, it, 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 it's got maybe a little more, more horsepower. Now, is the factory 
still going, you know, a lot of times English companies, they just sort of like, like Tony Crook in Bristol, they keep the doors open and, mm. you know, a few of the old guys still make parts, whatever. Is that a going concern anymore or no? Yeah, I mean, there's a massive scene supporting um, all of the, the, the classic cars, if you yeah. like, um, in, in the UK, but there's also TVR is still uh, alive today as right. well. And yeah. they are trying to bring back the brand uh, with the, a new Griffith yeah. um, that is being worked on presently. So. Well, the Griffith, I remember I was a kid and I think 1964, there was an, an, an American who imported, the Griffith was a TVR with a 289 engine in it, like, like the, uh, Ford Cobra right. or the, uh, the, the Sunbeam Tiger, you know. And it was such a short wheelbase. You'd nail it and you just, you, you just spin around in a circle because that's, it, would just, it would just thrust itself like this. It was hilarious to drive, scary fast. Right. But yeah, I, I, they, they, and, and every now and then you see one on Bring a Trailer, they pop up, mm -hmm. you know. It looks like it got put in a drill press and they just sort of push the wheels together right. this way. And I just, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's really neat. But this is, uh, yeah, I think it's a very impressive car. Like, what else do we have? Yeah, obviously it's two plus two. Mm. Very short person can sit back there. Uh, actually it's a three plus one. Um, the front uh, passenger seat on this slides quite a, quite a way forwards. Um, so you can actually get three, you know, reasonable sized people into the yeah, vehicle. Yeah. So you've got a kind of accommodation there if you want it. You couldn't get you in there, but you could get, yeah. Not quite, no. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons I love these vehicles is Peter Wheeler, uh, who, who owned the company then was 6'4". Uh, I'm 6'5". I'm right. Um, so all of the cars at that time were designed around him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite nice because I... Well, that's what I, I love fit, about so. the English. They make it, I, I always like one man's vision mm -hmm. of a car. W.O. Bentley, Frederick Lanchester, uh, Gordon Murray. Gordon Murray didn't like radios, so the F1 uh, didn't couldn't get a radio. <laughs> you know, even uh, Isagonas, who designed the Mini, hated radio. Shouldn't have a radio in a car. Yeah. And people made fortunes selling radios for Minis because he wouldn't produce it with a radio. I just, right. Yeah, just that English quirkiness is very funny to me. Yeah. It's interesting. Can we open the boot? See what that looks like? Yeah, sure. So you actually have to press the badge. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. They've, they've actually got quite a large trunk space. Actually, you do have quite a large yeah, trunk space. It's, it's quite deep, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a practical car. You know, if you're trying to convince the spouse, you know, oh, no, honey, look, it's got this big trunk. And it's, there you go. Kids can get in the back. And, yeah. How many miles on this particular one? Uh, this was done just over 34,000. So, 34,000. Um, yeah, not, not bad for 26 years old. So. No, not bad at all. And if you have something like this, you're probably taking care of it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah people, yeah, very nice. It's their own wheel as well. Well, can we take it for a spin? Yeah, absolutely, let's do it. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you got, I actually have to move the seat forward. You actually have plenty of... There's lots of scope, yeah, John. That's three plus one, wow. There you go. Well, throaty. Oh, there we are. This one 360 and 440 up to 440 and 4.5, so they've got a lot of gap and go. That, uh, you know, quite unique uh, engine tone as well, right? Because of the flat wing. Yeah, really, yeah. Have you ever driven any of the older cars, uh, TVRs, Jay, the, uh, the Vixens or the. No, no. You don't, you, don't, you don't see them here. No, they don't. There seems to be a few more of them on the East Coast. Yeah, plenty of dark, isn't it? Pretty well. Very, very positive handling. There's no red line. What is it? About 55, six? Oh, uh, seven thousand. Huh? Seven thousand. What is seven thousand? Yeah. Yeah. So it really revs and revs because of that flat plane cranks. So. When I was a kid, 
there was one of those stupid car movies called Red Line 7000. Right. <laughs> yeah, the guy's driving, he's got his foot in, he's 68, 69, 7, and the car's shaking, you know, it's so stupid. <laughs> I love that long pull. Yeah. Yeah, the great fun to drive. I kind of remember Wolf in Sheep's clothing, they look so pretty. So nice. But now, then, was that the stock exhaust system? Yeah, this is, oh. yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, it's had the cats out yeah. of this one, but generally, yeah. yeah. If you weren't an enthusiast, you'd think the engine was rough, but it's not yeah. rough. Yeah. Gives you a lot of feedback, a lot of noise. Oh, yeah.
the exact stroke yeah. dimension, so this particular engine. Well, the English used to tax by the bore, and, the, and other countries are taxed by the stroke. So oh, you'd have these like eight liter bay with these little bore like this, but a huge <laughs> massive stroke. Yeah, you know, you know, strokes. <laughs> so you have this massive torque, and this is a nice compromise. You got plenty of torque. My favorite thing is when you drop it down a gear, like the second or, or third, and they just put your foot in it. Enjoy watching the tack climb yeah. across the dial there. And it picks up so quickly, right? It really does. I mean, I think you, you could still make this car today, and it would be contemporary and modern. And it's like the Duesenberg. That was the fast built. Every Duesenberg was built in 1928. They were twin cam, four valves, right. 421 cubic inches. And it was the most powerful American engine until a Hemi came out in the 50s. And this is the same type of thing. You could, like the XK120, you could do a 20-year a run on this motor and it'd still be contemporary. Right, yeah. I mean, at, at the time, Jay, the uh, specific output per liter for uh, for these engines was the best in class. It was yeah, the best yeah, that's in right. the world at the time. You know. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I've always been anxious to drive one of these. And it's one of those things you kind of say, oh, I'll get this one. Oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah. you know? And now they're here, they're here in the States to, yeah. to have fun in. Well, I highly recommend it. I think it's great. If you're a car enthusiast, you owe it to go to their website. What is the website? Tell us, TVR. Uh, so TVRGarage.com. TVRGarage.com. Yeah. Or garage if you're in America. Garage.com. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, but it's a car built by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Absolutely. And that's what I love about the English, whether it's Vincent Motorcycles or Bruff Superiors or Morgans, there's always a, a, a whole whole bunch of guys that just want to get behind it and keep the thing going. And that's what you guys are doing. I think it's just terrific. Yeah, absolutely, Jay. We want to try and help uh, TVRs uh, kind of grow here in the, in the States and uh, give people the opportunity to enjoy these fantastic vehicles. So. Parts are still available from England? Yeah, there's a, there's a massive network of parts and service support in the UK. Yeah. We've made some great connections back to back to people in the UK, and uh, we're now starting to provide that support here in the States for provision of parts and service. Well, sometimes you forget, you know. If I go from the P1 to the F1, I mean, I was on the freeway, and I doubt you the third, and I nail it. I just start sliding side. I go, all right, that's right. This has nothing. It's amazing that's a stock exhaust system. It just sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, just wonderfully responsive. Yeah, the, the chassis, the brakes, the engine, it just gives you great feedback yeah. as a driver. Yeah. Sometimes modern cars rev so quickly. I, I just enjoy that. You know, I've got a 63 Porsche Carrera 2 over there, the four cam. And uh, I enjoy just watching the tack make yeah. the trip across the dial. Yeah. You know? it's Very broad, nice. Broad spectrum of power. Well, as I said before, if you really want something unique and different, then this is it. You just, as I said, you won't see yourself coming and going. And it's a proper car. There's nothing kit carish about it. You know, you, you get leery sometimes when cars you never heard of show up and go, what's that? You know? But if you check any of the English press or any of the magazines you might have from the 90s, the people raved about these. They just weren't available here in the States because they couldn't meet emissions or crash down. It was some other standard like that. But I mean, it's a tube frame. It's 2,400 pounds. I mean, that's that's pretty fantastic. That's like Lotus territory. But you've got a lot of horsepower. This one's 360. They go as high as what, 420? Uh, 420, 420 or 440 with a red rose tube. Yeah, yeah. nice. Well, Gavin, thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for doing God's work here and saving <laughs> these cars. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Right. Remember,